So IOD paint inlays are actual, authentic, proprietary paint that allows you to embed a beautiful design into your painted surface. They come in a variety of designs and almost anything that you can hand paint, you can use a paint inlay on. On the back of the package, there's a layout guide, and this is going to help you as you plan out the composition of your own project. So here's how they look coming out of the package. On one side, you have a printed grid for trimming, and on the opposite side, you have the actual painted design. You'll wanna handle it with care so you don't get that side wet while you're preparing for your project. And wherever you're gonna be joining the design together, you'll wanna to make sure to trim that margin. So we've just finished laying out the design according to the guide on the back of the package. And we've got our seams trimmed and they're lined up beautifully. So we are now going to start applying the inlay. We're going to apply it section by section because it's important that they be put into wet paint. So that's why you go in a little bit of a, at a time because you don't want it to dry first. Now, one of the cool things about the paint inlays is that you can achieve a lot of leather-like kind of mm. wrinkled texture in your finish, yeah. but you can also minimize the texture if you pre-wet just the light mist of the back side of each of the sheets. And what that does is it pre-expands those fibers so it's not happening when it goes into the paint, it's happening before it goes into the paint. A question that we actually get asked a lot is how do you know how much paint to use? Do you wanna talk about that? Yeah, that's a great question. You wanna make sure that there's enough paint that it's a nice, I'd say generous, but not excessive coat so that as you're working, you can get that sheet, like Sally mentioned earlier, into that paint and arranged as you need it to be without it drying out. If there's dry spots, the inlay is not going to embed in those areas. Once you actually learn how to use them and how they respond to the different amounts of paint, you can actually use that information to get the effects that you want. Lots of cool techniques. You do want to be mindful as you lay, especially your first piece into place, that you are as perpendicular or square on your surface, straight as you can be, because the rest of your pieces will follow suit as you seam them together. Now, once you get it laid down and it's straight, you can do two different ways you can do this. You can use a damp, smooth cloth, soft cloth, and you can use that to smooth it out. And, or you can use a brayer. You're not wanting to apply too much pressure because you don't want to squish that paint around too much. You just want to make sure that you're getting a good solid contact so that all of that pigment is really embedded into your paint coat.
Now that our project is thoroughly dry, we're going to remove it. But now is a great time to mention that because we use the suggested chalk type or mineral type paint without a lot of polymers in it, our open time is almost unlimited. You can go a day, overnight, you can go a few days, and those will release your paper as you need them to. If you're using any other type of paint, you want to be more mindful of your dry time because you don't want a full cure because those polymers that can be in other types of paint will grip it more strongly and it'll be a little more difficult to release. There are ways to do that you can find in other videos so that you can also use those type of paints, but we're covering the basics today. Now is the fun part. We are going to remove the paint inlay. We've allowed this to dry, like Josie said, and we are going to remove it piece by piece to reveal the beautiful hand-painted design. There are a couple of ways that you can dampen the surface to remove it. And we are using two different methods today, the mister and a wet shop cloth. Um, either one will work. You do wanna be mindful of how much water you want. You want it nice and damp, but not so sopping that you get the project sloppy. And you just dampen the back just enough to where it releases the carrier sheet. If anything, people tend to be a little conservative with the water. So you do wanna make sure you have plenty because that, like I said, is what is gonna release that carrier sheet. Now, after you've gotten it nice and damp, you can see the translucency there. Um, you just pick up a corner and you wanna see if, you actually wanna wait about 30 seconds and pick up that corner and see if it's releasing easily. If it's not, you can actually go back in and add a little bit more water, but you can see pretty quickly if it's coming off. You wanna keep your um, sheet nice and low at a low angle and just slowly pull that off. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I just love it. Now I have this sheet and now is a perfect time to talk about one of the things we absolutely love about the paint inlays. And that is you can get one to two, possibly three to four, um, to definitely two uses out of these. So each uh, consecutive use is going to be a little fainter and it's also going to pull the characteristics of the project before it. So keep that in mind. So you wanna lay these aside really carefully and flat in a nice dry place so that they're safe for the next project. Now with this next sheet, I'm gonna to wanna to be really careful because this paint is still reactive. What does that mean? That means that if it gets wet, it will move. So you want to be sure to not get it wet. Now, if you're, you, depending on your pace and the conditions, you can actually do this whole thing at once and therefore avoiding that possibility. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the next sections.
So we have all of them removed. Our beautiful design is ready. We're going to allow it to dry thoroughly and then we're gonna come in with a two-step sealing process. The reason it's a two-step process is because the remember, the paint is reactive. That means if you went right in with your brushed on water-based finish, that's going to blur it. So what we wanna do is first we wanna set it with a sprayed on sealer. That can be your favorite water-based polyurethane in a spray can, or it can be a water-based type polyurethane that's diluted one-to-one -one with water in a spritzer, shaken well and then spritzed on. After that dries, then you'll go back in with your favorite brushed on sealer. Now that we've done the spritz coat, we've allowed it to thoroughly dry and we're gonna go on with a brush coat. Now, that first spritzed on setting coat lightly encapsulates it so that you can go in with your brushed on coat and the friction is not going to cause it to blur. However, you don't want to overwork it because you could break through that initial setting coat and cause it to blur. Once you get that finished coat on and it's dry, your project's done. But what you need to remember is how beautiful this is and how much you're going to love it because there are no halos. This is not a synthetic film. This is real paint embedded into your surface, mm -hmm. just like historical pieces from the past. Exactly, it's just a hand painted piece. Now for more details and to learn more about different projects you can do and different creative processes with these, um, once you get the basics down, you'll wanna check out our YouTube channel and look for the playlist inlays.